Hello everyone, welcome to Advanced Knowledge Systems and a warm welcome to AKSIS Academy which is one of the premier institutions in India and it offers examination coaching for UPSC CSC, State Public Service Commission, SSC Combined Graduate Level and CLAT examination. And about me, I'm Sandeep Bhushan Tumala and my credentials are I have 10 years of teaching experience for civil services I take up international relations and internal security and the analysis of the newspaper. And this session is in regards to the DNA of the Hindu newspaper and we will be focusing today's DNA that is of 5th of February 2021. And throughout my session I would be emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases which will be useful for prelims perspective wherein we will identify the factual, analytical and conceptual questions and while you imbibe the keywords and the key phrases in your answer writing, your answers would be precise and concise and thereby you will score higher marks in the mains examination. And this session that is AKS IAS Academy Daily News Analysis will help you to crack both prelims and mains of 2021. And before we get into the DNA of the newspaper, we will look at the quote of the day and the quote of the day says that all progress takes place outside the comfort zone. So what is very important is once you are in, in the mode of achieving or having success, then you should come out of the comfort zone and only then the progress takes place. I repeat, all progress takes place outside the comfort zone. And now we we'll look at the DNA of the Hindu newspaper and the news what we'll be covering is about the Indians who are exposed to the novel coronavirus. So if you look at this, there was a survey which was conducted by the ICMR that is Indian Council of Medical Research and that survey is called a serological survey and it is a third round of serological survey conducted by ICMR and the report has found out that one in five Indians have been infected by the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus and this survey report is as per the third round conducted up to December 2020 and as per the report or the survey that is serological survey threefold increase has taken place since August and 30 fold increase since May 2020 and the Director General of ICMR Balram Bhargava has also said that the message about the five or one in five Indians who have been affected or infected by the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus is a large population of the prop remains vulnerable. That means there is still more chances of SARS-CoV-2 virus being spread and it is very necessary that as the large proportion of the population remains vulnerable, it is necessary that vaccines should be administered. And even though vaccines are necessary and administered, there should not be any kind of complacency. That is, in regards to having habit towards the mask, social distancing and hand hygiene practices. And India is showing a decline in regards to the fresh infection cases since September 2020 and if you look at there are only 12,899 new infection and the active cases are 1.6 lakh. In comparing with the third survey that is now to the previous survey, if you look at the samples which have been taken by the previous sero surveillance survey in the rural areas it was only 5.2 percentage of antibodies and now by the latest survey or the third survey it has increased to 19 percentage of the antibodies in the sampled survey in rural areas and along with that there is a sharp increase in both urban and non-urban slum areas and when we compare it with the antibodies which has jumped or increased in the urban slums it is 31 percentage to the previous survey wherein it had only 16 percentage of antibodies in the urban slums and if when we compare that the antibodies in the urban non slums it was earlier 9 percentage in the second survey and now in the third survey it is 26 percentage of antibodies 
which are shown in the sampled for the urban slums, urban non-slums and also rural areas. So thereby there is certainly a large proportion of the population still remains under vulnerable. That is why vaccine has to be administered along with taking into consideration of wearing the mask, social distancing and hand hygiene. So this there is a keyword that is what you need to focus is serological survey which is being conducted by ICMR and when we look at this the exposure is from May 11th to June 1st or June 4th of 2020 the exposure was 0.7 percentage and when you compare again in the month of August to September which was peak 7.1 percentage and later on again it has declined but again still increased that is December 17 till January 8, 2021, it was 21.5 percentage. That means the third nationwide COVID-19 seroprevalence survey has, has put forward the overall exposure to virus at 21.5 percentage, wherein it shows that 1 in 5 person aged 10 years above are infected by virus. And if you look at this, the prevalence that is very high amongst the health workers is 25.7 percentage and for doctors and nurses it is 26.6 percentage. And if you look at the third sero prevalence or sero survey, it shows that the gender and exposure and we compare with female and male, female are the one who are exposed more that is 22.7 percentage and male 20.3 percentage and the survey has also break the age or it has segregated the age in regards to the prevalence of SARS-CoV-2 virus that is 10 to 17 years is the highest with 25.3 percentage 18 to 44 is 19.9 percentage 45 to 60 years age they are Prevalence is 23.4 percentage and above 60 it is 23.4 percentage. So this survey that is the third zero survey has given an indication that the antibodies have been incre increased and the gender and exposure and then the percentage of female and ma male in comparing with again the age group from 10 to 17, 18 to 44, 45 to 60 and above 60 years and how the period from May till January 8, 2021, the exposure of the virus is now overall at 21.5 percentage. And there is another news in regards to the high net worth individuals, especially focusing on the Employees Provident Fund. And here the news is about that EPF is not just a nest, is, just, is not just a nest egg but it is a goose that lays golden eggs and this is for whom we will look at and as per the department of revenue there are more than 1.23 lakh high net worth worth individuals and this high net worth worth individuals have deposited more than 62,500 crore into the employees provident fund accounts in the year 2018-19 fiscal year that means there is 62,500 crores deposited by high net worth individuals please do understand here it is high net worth but they are individuals wherein they are more than 1.23 lakh and the department of revenue has said that the largest epf account has a balance of rupees 103 crore this is the concern having a balance of 103 crores of rupees is the question which has been raised and the necessity for the union government through the budget to impose tax on the income of employees provident fund contribution this is a key phrase why the union government has taken a decision through the budget 2021 
to tax the income of employees provident fund contribution which has 1.23 lakh high net worth individuals is because the largest epf account has 103 crore balance and that is raising the concern that there is a necessity to tax the income on employees provident fund contribution and epf accounts if you look at that is employees provident fund is a mandatory for employees who are earning up to 15000 a month in firms who are or firm which has over or greater than 20 workers and here the contribution is 12% of the basic pay and da that is dns allowance which will be deducted by employees contribution and another 12% would be remitted by the employer so it is by the employees contribution and employer with 12 percentage of the basic pay and dns allowance would be a mandatory for the employees who are earning up to 15000 a month this is in regards to what is epf accounts or employees provident fund and if you look at what the government has done it in regards to the epf accounts that is the contribution by the employers into the employee welfare scheme so the government has capped the contribution it has put a limit to the contribution by employers please do understand by the employers into employee welfare scheme here the keyword is employees welfare scheme so what are the employees welfare scheme that is for example employees provident fund and national pension scheme or superannuation plan and it has the government has capped the contribution by employees into the welfare or employee welfare schemes like epf national pension scheme or superannuation plan at 7.5 lakh a year in last year's budget that is 2020 but the government in 2020 has also said that government as well as private sector employees are allowed to make the voluntary contribution over and above the statutory deductions into the gpf or epf that is into the general provident fund account or employees provident fund account and that is the now the cause of concern that why the largest epf account has a balance of 103 crore wherein the government goes ahead with the epf accounts or the necessity of the employees provident fund account wherein 12 percentage of the basic pay and dns allowance would be deducted as employees contribution and the rest 12 percent by the employer but here the government has capped the employee welfare schemes at 7.5 lakh a year but there is a point which has to be looked or a gap that the government as well as private sector employees were allowed and this has made the largest epf account to 103 crore because here the government has allowed to make the voluntary contribution over and above the statutory deduction over and above into general provident fund and epf fund that is why the employee welfare schemes had been used by the rich people not just as a nest of x but they have used epf as a goose that lays golden eggs please do understand so here the individuals have taken the entire advantage of government giving the chance or allowing the voluntary contribution into the general provident fund and epf now the largest epf account is with 103 crore that is why in the budget union government that is the finance minister has decided to tax the income on employees provident fund whose investment is or the credit rupees 2.5 lakh 
a year or over 2.5 lakh a year. And now we look at why the government has the reasons to tax the income on EPF contribution. And Nirmala Sitaraman, that is a finance minister, has said that some people went to the extent of contributing 1 crore each month into PF accounts. That is why now in the budget 2021, the government has decided, that is the finance minister has decided that the one who would be contributing over 2.5 lakh crore a year would be taxed on the PF contribution because earlier few of them have went to the extent of contributing 1 crore each month. Please do understand 1 crore each month. That is why the EPF accounts is not just as a nest of eggs but it has become a goose that lays golden eggs and the revenue department has said that the top 20 high net worth individuals have about 825 crore in their EPF accounts and the top 100 HNIs that is high net worth individuals have 2000 crore and this is the cause of concern which the revenue department and the finance ministry has focused on the EPF contribution which is actually a employee welfare schemes but it is used by few of the individuals to slash or to make sure that they are depositing their money and protecting their money or evading taxes by contributing the money into the EPF around close to 1 crore each month and that is why the finance ministry has decided in the budget 2021 to tax the income on provider fund which wherein the contribution would be over 2.5 lakh in a year and the largest EPF account has 103 and the next two followed two accounts have over 83 crore each and that is the point which has to be looked into and it is certainly looked into by the finance ministry in the budget 2021 and the revenue department has also said that the tax exemption that is the welfare scheme which we have looked at that is it is the EPF is the employee welfare scheme national pension scheme superannuation plan or the employee welfare schemes and this welfare or employee welfare schemes which has the tax exemptions which is provided by the taxpayers money as it is unfair because it is unfair because it is allowing a small group or few or some people of HNIs that is high net worth individuals to misuse the employee welfare scheme facility please do understand here as the few or a small group of hnis are misusing the welfare facility which is provided by the union government and they are misusing it and they are earning wrongfully tax-free income they are evading tax and contributing or they are depositing in the employee provident fund which wherein they are earning wrongfully tax-free income wrongfully tax-free income and assured interest return please do understand here keywords they are misusing the welfare facility and earning wrongfully tax-free income and it is an assured interest return and the steps taken by the finance ministry to tax the income on the employees provident fund is intended to enforce this is keyword to enforce principle of equity among contributors the keyword is principle of equity so therefore we will look at this as a question since any tax exemption is provided to taxpayers money 
it is unfair to allow a small group of high net worth individuals to misuse a welfare facility and earn wrongful tax free income and assured interest return and the step intended was to enforce the principle of equity among contributors critically analyze for the mains examination economy point of view because the government has taken an decision to tax on the epf but there are questions raised also that a small group of nhis have misused and are earning wrongful tax free income and an assured interest return but why the whole lot of hnis who are depositing or contributing their amount into the employees provident fund or national pension scheme or superannuation plan should be taxed should be taxed so here how you would critically analyze here it is in regards to the some people or a small group of hnis versus large group of hnis and how the finance ministry's decision in the budget 2021 of taxing the income of provident fund is accepted by large group of hnis that is why i said critically analyze for the mains examination and there is another news which talks about now center is ready to introduce a bill and this has been decided by the ministry of home affairs now it is all set to introduce a approved legislation which has been approved by the union cabinet in the budget session it is all set to be introduced and here it would amend a 1991 act the approved legislation by union cabinet the ministry of home affairs is all set to amend the 1991 act which pertains this act pertains to the powers and functions of the delhi government and lieutenant governor so here it is the tussle between the delhi government versus or the lieutenant governor which we have been encountering or we have experienced since almost 2016 the powers and functions of the delhi government and the lieutenant governor so here the ministry of home affairs is all set to amend the 1991 act in the budget session and the bill is likely to define the powers of the lieutenant governor and the delhi government on the lines that is wherein it would be based on the supreme court judgment of february 2019 and the bill is likely to give more teeth or more powers to the lg's office that is lieutenant governor office rather than the delhi government and we have seen in the past since 2016 that the aam aadmi party led delhi government and the lieutenant governor are at loggerheads especially in regards to the administrative matters in the capital that is in the delhi and supreme court bench has looked at the various aspects unanimous verdict was taken on the role and functions of the two authorities that is the delhi government that is the chief minister versus lg they have taken an unanimous verdict but one issue was pending that is the question of services the supreme court bench of justice ak sikri and ashok bhushan have taken an unanimous verdict on the role and functions of the two authorities that is the chief minister of delhi and the lieutenant governor of delhi but a question of services has been put on on hold and this question of services has been referred to larger bench of the supreme court and the hearing on or in regards to the question of services 
of the two authorities is yet to be concluded and now the ministry of home has decided that it would introduce the bill in the parliament budget session and the government of national capital territory of delhi amendment bill 2021 is among two other 20 bills which are proposed to be introduced in the parliament session and according to the changes or the bill to be introduced the new act or the new bill would give the lieutenant governor a discretionary powers in any matter in any matter that is beyond the purview of the powers of the delhi assembly look at it now the total control or the entire discretionary powers would land in the hands of the lieutenant governor of delhi by the new bill that is government of national capital territory of delhi amendment bill 2020 and it would be discretionary in any matters beyond the purview of the powers of the delhi assembly and also in the matters relating to the all india civil services and acb also anti corruption bureau so therefore there is a necessity for prelims perspective from polity as well as mains that is the powers and functions of the chief minister or the administrative matters between the chief minister of delhi and the lieutenant governor of delhi and hal is planning to export light combat aircraft so we have seen yesterday's news that defense minister rajna singh has all set for the new deal with hal for manufacturing of 83 light combat aircraft tejas and now hal chairman and managing director madhavan has said that hal is actively looking for exports of tejas light combat aircraft with countries which are part of southeast asia and with countries part of southwest asia because these countries are showing interest of buying the lca tejas that is light combat aircraft tejas and each lca mk 1a jet would cost around 306 crore and the lca mk 1a jet is an indigenous content of the aircraft is now currently 52 percentage and the hindustan aeronautics limited is looking at ways to increase the indigenous content of lca mk 1a jet from 52 percentage to 65 percentage and the certification will be given for requirements and productions of hals which it has two manufacturing units for the production and then later on actively looking for exports of the light combat aircraft tejas and the two manufacturing units of hl is at bengaluru and nasik which would be given certification for the requirement and production of tejas light combat aircraft and we'll now look at the unmanned fighter which this is an ambitious futuristic project of hl keyword ambitious futuristic project of hl has been announced and this is for the development of unmanned fighter jet the new or futuristic ambitious project is unmanned fighter jet and this would be controlled by a manned aircraft called manned unmanned teaming please do understand here you have an unmanned fighter jet which would be controlled by a manned aircraft controlled by manned aircraft and this is called as manned unmanned teaming and this unmanned fighter jet or the manned unmanned teaming is or will be able to strike deep inside the enemy territory called as combat air teaming system the system which is part of the manned unmanned teaming is called as 
combat air teaming system which will be striking deep inside the enemy territory and this combat air teaming system consists of cats that is combat air teaming teaming system hunter cats warrior and alpha s and all these are unmanned systems and this unmanned systems that is cats hunter cats warrior and alpha s are all controlled by a manned mother aircraft that is the fighter jet and then the fighter jet is being customized around the light combat aircraft and jaguar aircraft wherein that catch warrior would be armed and it will be able to strike deep inside the enemy territory with the help of the manned mother aircraft that is mothership which will be on to the indian territory please do understand the manned mother aircraft which is will be on the indian territory and the fighter jet will be customized around the lca that is light combat aircraft and the jaguar aircraft which will be having the catch warrior which will strike deep inside the enemy territory and this now would be powered by hl engine that is the catch warrior or the lca jaguar aircraft which is an unmanned aircraft fighter jet which will be powered by hl engine and this will be powering pilotless target aircraft lakshya these are all keywords for the defense and also science and technology and this ambitious futuristic project that is unmanned fighter jet will be ready to fly in another coming 4 to 5 years time which is of an outlay of money 400 crores would be used for the cats warrior and now we will look at how india is striking a cautious note on the developments in myanmar and it is very closely focusing on the regional developments on the regional developments so india or india's external affairs ministry spokesperson anurag srivastava has highlighted the regional developments especially the country that is sri lanka and also myanmar and recently we have seen that sri lanka has cancelled the east container terminal pact which was between sri lanka and it was with sri lanka was with japan and india so sri lanka has cancelled the east container terminal pact with japan and india and the ministry of external affairs spokesperson anurag srivastava has brought to the notice and reminded sri lanka or the officials to adhere to the international commitments for mutually beneficial proposition proposition so the key phrase here is what is been highlighted by anurag srivastava is that the international commitment for mutually beneficial propositions and the spokesperson of the ministry of external affairs i have also emphasized about the scenario or the situation in myanmar and said that india and myanmar are neighbors with close cultural and people to people to people ties which they are bolstered or which has been deepened by trade economic security and defense related exchanges and india was trying to say that india and myanmar are neighbors even though india had expressed a deep concern on february 1st when the military in myanmar has taken over the government and india has asked myanmar for maintenance of the rule of law and the democratic process here the rule of law and democratic process india was asking 
or it was expressing the concern towards Myanmar and it is asking for the maintenance of rule of law and the democratic process so that Myanmar would come to democratic process as soon as possible. And I hope this session was informative, knowledgeable and also helpful for main central limbs perspective from UPSC and I would say a very big thank you to all. Good luck to you all and then do maintain consistency, stick to your schedule and then take care of your physical health and mental health and do not forget to like the video, share the video and subscribe the AKSIS Academy English Medium YouTube channel and also have access to the website and to the telegram link of AKSIS Academy that is Advanced Knowledge System and I would again see you tomorrow with the daily news analysis. Till then, thank you. Goodbye. Take care.